Welcome to the Autodesk Fusion 360 What's New in Manufacturing for the October release. Dan's away on a well-earned sabbatical, so it's down to me to deliver this What's New video. So be prepared for lots of Zs instead of Zs, and data instead of data, as we look at what's new and what's in preview for this release. We start with the updated Machine Tool Builder, which, thanks to your testing and feedback, we are now moving out of public preview and into full release. The machine configuration dialog has been overhauled to improve the user experience with the removal of some unused fields such as part dimensions to improve clarity and adjustments made to the layout, all of which make it easier to configure your machines for simulation. A new general page has been added to list the vendor, model and description with a new option to add a custom image display making it easier to identify within the machine library. The kinematics have been combined into a single area within the dialog making it easier to add, delete, and reorder axes in the kinematic chain. This includes an update to the way the orientation of axes are defined, where common axis definitions have replaced the need to determine the orientation of axis vectors. There is also the added ability to determine multiple static elements in the kinematic chain too, increasing simulation flexibility, allowing the removal of bolt-on accessories such as tool setters or fixture plates. What's more, the machine configuration dialog now supports more advanced kinematic chains, removing the limitation of only supporting up to 5-axis machines with a single controller, and paving the way to more advanced machines in the future. Continuing that theme, we are constantly making updates to both our machine tool and post-processor libraries, and this month is no exception, with the addition of new additive machines from Creality and Sindo, and a new machine simulation model for the Herco VMX60 SWI-H250. There have also been updates to a whole host of milling post processors, including Akuma, as well as updates to mill term post processors from Doosan, Haas and Mazak, and the addition of 32 new beta post processors for Hyundai machines. There have been a number of improvements to additive manufacturing. When manually positioning your components within your build volume, any adjustment in the component orientation, such as minimizing the build height, would result in a reorientation of the component coordinate system, making it more difficult to position relative to the machine orientation. The new option within the Move Component dialog lets you change from the component XYZ to the machine XYZ, making it much easier to manually position your components within your machine build volume speeding up the time it takes to make your additive parts. A number of improvements have also been made to the visualization of support structures within additive manufacturing. Firstly, support structures now cross-highlight as expected when selected within the browser tree, making it easier to identify your support structures within the graphics window. Secondly, the display of support structures has been improved, with enhanced visibility of any cross-face supports when looking along the line of the support structures which is essential when trying to identify where they have been applied. And lastly, support structures will now honor section views as expected, meaning that when a section view is established on the model, the support structures will also be sectioned, helping you to better analyze your parts to improve production success. Next, we have an addition to the support of product manufacturing information, otherwise known as PMI. Importing PMI data into Fusion 360 helps you check that the parts you manufacture conform to the dimensions and tolerances that the designer defined. So, to supplement the support for both STEP and Inventor PMI, Fusion 360 can now import PMI from Siemens NX files. This information is incredibly useful for part verification, and can be utilized downstream, for example, to establish the tolerance values for your inspection routines. In this release, there are also a number of other enhancements, including performance improvements for nesting and fabrication, updates to the API, and tool library updates, such as the new pop-up messages for either the success or failure following the copying and pasting of presets, and the ability to navigate the autocomplete drop-down list with the arrow keys, helping to speed up your tool definitions and get you machining sooner. As well as the new features in this release, there are also a number of preview features available to you which indicate some exciting times ahead in terms of the forthcoming functionality. Remember that these features will need to be turned on in your preferences to allow you to test their functionality, and we welcome any feedback you have on them in the Fusion 360 forum. First up, coming into public preview is the new enhanced flow toolpath. When switched on in the preferences, 
an additional flow toolpath appears in the 3D toolpath list marked Preview. Unlike the standard flow toolpath which uses a triangulated model, the enhanced flow uses the underlying model faces to produce the toolpath, creating a much smoother result and improving reliability. The enhanced flow also has step over and cusp height control, compared to the trial and error process of setting the total number of passes in the original flow. This improves automation and ultimately results in a better surface finish, reducing the need for manual rework. Next we have an enhancement to the blend strategy. Now the blend strategy itself is still in preview, but we continue to develop it further, this time with the addition of undercut support. Available for 3-axis machining only, undercut detection within the blend strategy allows the use of tools such as lollipop or disc cutters to access overhanging areas of the model that would have been previously unreachable, increasing the versatility of the blend toolpath and helping to reduce the number of setups required to machine parts. For inspection, a new preview option has been added to allow the manual measurement of the distance between a reference plane and the circular profile of either a boss or hole. Measurements can be derived from either a direct measurement or from maximum or minimum distances, increasing the options available for you to check your parts for compliance to reduce scrap rates. Lastly, we have the new corner finishing toolpath, which is now available as an extension preview. This new corner toolpath brings together some of the best corner finishing technology from Autodesk PowerMill, combining them into a single rest finishing toolpath that will produce better results and allow for more automation of toolpath strategies on complex feature rich parts. This new strategy holds a number of advantages over the native pencil machining, such as the utilization of larger reference tools to define rest machining regions, and options to vary the strategy depending on whether the corners are steep or shallow to improve cutting conditions, with support for multi-axis machining and collision avoidance to produce safe and efficient toolpaths. And that's everything for this October release video. Thanks for watching this update, and don't forget to check out the blog post to learn about what else is new in Autodesk Fusion 360.